Good morning. My name is Rafael Espina. I'm the chair of the Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing Committee. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Margaret Chin from Manhattan, Peter Ku from Queens, and we have Karen Kozlowitz all the way from Queens as well. In today's hearing, we'll, we'll hear testimony on three pieces of legislation related to street vending in New York City. Street vendors are crucial to the fabric of New York City, adding vibrancy and much needed diversity to the economic landscape. There are four types of vending that exist in the city, and each of them offer valuable con contributions. We have general vendors that provide convenient, cheap, and fast alternatives to traditional retail outlets, selling everything from belts, bags, books, or a, a much needed umbrella as soon as the storm clouds roll in. First Amendment vendors provide their creative wares, offering tourists and locals unique pieces of art and writing, while food and green carts ensure that our urban spaces don't become deserts to fresh and affordable food options. Street vending is also a vital source of income for many people, including veterans and newly arrived immigrants. Traditional brick and mortar retail outlets are cost prohibitive for many people, but street vending offers an entrepreneurial alternative and an avenue for economic independence. Vendors contribute to lively public spaces, an increased sense of localized community, and an economic security for many New Yorkers. However, public space in New York is a rare commodity, and there are competing demands on this precious resource. It's important that while recognizing the value of street vendors and doing what we can to ensure their sustainability, we balance those needs against other issues. In New York City, our population density that is, that is larger than some countries, sidewalk space will always be a content contentious issue. The council has always sought to ensure a balance between the space utilized by vendors and un unobstructed spaces needed to accommodate pedestrian traffic, which is why there are caps on the number of general and food vendor licenses that can be issued. However, like the area around the World Trade Center, some parts of the city face specific challenges. As such, there are numerous restrictions on where vendors may vend to accommodate those competing needs. Security around the World Trade Center site is one such example. After the 9-11 attacks, the city council and the state enacted vending restrictions in the area. The need to continue to implement enhanced security measures in this area is of utmost importance, particularly since the last two recent attacks in September of 2016 and October of 2017 were only blocks away from that zone. The recent development in the area, including the recent opening of three World Trade Center and other revitalization efforts, have increased foot, tra foot traffic to the area, thereby making it more attractive to vendors. Unfortunately, this has created logistical challenges for security in the area. For example, Trucks entering the prohibited zone are subject to inspection at checkpoints around a WTC zone. Vending carts on sidewalks next to these checkpoints make it difficult for security personnel to conduct searches while these trucks are pulled over to the side of the street. To this end, the committee is proposing to minimally expand some of the boundaries that are currently defined, that currently define the general and food vendor exclusion zone to accommodate current security efforts as well as expected increased traffic that is due to the opening of Tower 3. This minor but important extension will mean that the current security booths and checkpoints, which currently lay outside of the exclusion zone, will be incorporated. These security booths are vital for the inspection of trucks entering the zone and general security surveillance of the area. At the same time, vendors surrounding Zuccotti Park, a popular area for food vendors, is excluded and those vendors will be able to continue vending in that area. Similarly, Downtown Flushing and Queens, Councilmember Coos District, experiences major overcrowding challenges with a per square mile density that is twice that of the city. It has the heaviest foot traffic outside of Manhattan. With the host of new businesses and residential developments in the works, the fight for scarce sidewalk space will only increase. Intro 969 aims to reduce overcrowding in downtown Flushing and limit sidewalk congestion by defining areas where street vending is restricted. Furthermore, intro 970, which proposes to restrict the use of char boilers by mobile food carts, intends to reduce air pollution carts. In 2016, the council enacted new rules that require brick and mortar businesses that use these broilers to install emission control devices. Given that a singular food vendor using a charcoal char broiler to cook meat contributes particulate matter into the air that is the equivalent of a diesel truck driving from New York to Denver and back, we're also seeking ways to reduce the amount of air pollution that food vendors produce. We look forward to today to hearing from the administration, business and the industry rep representatives, advocates, 
and other stakeholders about the recommendations regarding these three bills. Before I call on the administration to testify, I want to give my colleagues a chance to speak on their bills. Uh, but before they do that, I just want to acknowledge that we have Brad Landler from Brooklyn here with us. Councilmember Chin. Good morning. I'm Councilmember Chin, and I am the sponsor of Intro 959, which would update the perimeters of the no vending zone to accommodate the growing World Trade Center area and encompass vehicle checkpoint that ensure the safety of everyone who lives, visits, and works around the site. I would like to thank our chair, Espinal, for holding this hearing to ensure that all the stakeholders involved in this issue make their voices heard today. This legislation is about ensuring safety for pedestrians, and that include the growing number of workers and residents in and around the World Trade Center site. Since the, since the establishment of the no vending zone, secure vehicle checkpoints and bollards have been installed to serve these residents and workers while ensuring safety for everyone. With three World Trade Center opening and a performing arts center and even more buildings to follow, we know that more people will be coming to this area. To accommodate the new reality of an almost fully built out World Trade Center site, we are pursuing a narrow, limited expansion of the zone. The World Trade Center is a place where we have invested billions of dollars of public money to bring back to our community from the worst tragedy New York City has seen. Safety for everyone utilizing the revived and growing World Trade Center site remain our utmost priority. With that said, Lower Manhattan community is no strangers to vendors. This is your home too. These workers, many of them immigrants who come to New York City to fight for the American dream, are an integral part to the culture, economy, and history of our community. That is why I work hard to exclude Sakati Park from this proposal so that it can continue to be utilized by immigrant entrepreneurs and their customers. I'm also proud to be a longtime champion for legislation to dramatically expand opportunities for vendors of all races, ethnicity, and religions. I am continuing the fight to create a city where vendors and pedestrians and businesses can all coexist. I look forward to hearing feedbacks on how we can work together to achieve pedestrian safety for this increasingly congested site while continuing to provide support for vendors to continue to work and thrive in our city. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Councilmember Ku. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. I'm Councilmember Peter Ku from Queens. Uh, we will be discussing two bills I am introducing today uh, that look to address significant uh, quality of life issues regarding the use of sidewalk space in my district, and also air pollution throughout the city. So I want to thank Chair uh, Espinal and the administration coming uh, to testify. Um, the first bill I'm introducing is intro 969, which would create a special district in downtown Flushing that would prohibit street vending and street line stands. As one of the busiest transportation hubs in New York City, the downtown Flushing area has recently, over, has, has recently become overrun with sidewalk obstructions. Last year, we widened the sidewalks in hopes of providing more space for hundreds of thousands of pedestrians who share the space with bus stops, subways, and mom and pop stores. Unfortunately, our widened sidewalks has given rise to an increase of uh, illegal street vendors and street line stands. People who are taking the advantage of new space to sell everything from health insurance, counterfeit handbags, bed sheets, pots and pans, fruits and vegetables, and of course, socks. As a small business owner, I have no objection to people innovating in order to turn a profit, but I wholeheartedly object to those who do so at the expense of their community. So this legislation looks to return the sidewalks of one of the uh, New York City's transportation hubs back to the people, business, 
and residents who live there. The other bill, intro 970, will prohibit the use of char boilers on all city mobile food vending uh, units. Unfortunately, these cars are not subject to the same environmental oversight as restaurants, uh, which means our sidewalks and uh, neighboring buildings are overcome with thick clouds of charcoal smoke from cooking meat. According to the Department of Health testimony in 2016, one vendor grilling meat in mixed an amount of particulate pol pollution in one day, equivalent to what a diesel truck emits driving 3,500 miles, the equivalent of driving to Denver and come back. Grilling only one half pound burger produces about the same amount of fine particulate matters as a truck driving 35 miles. Not only are the vendors breathing in this pollution for hours on end, but nearby residents, businesses, and others must endure the constant clouds of smoke blowing in their windows and hanging over the streets. This bill will not affect flag uh, cooking services like girdles used in halal cups. So today, we are looking forward to hear insights and concerns from the public about these issues. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Councilman Raku. Administration, can you please give your testimony? Please raise your right hand for the oath. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee, and to answer council member questions honestly? Yes. yes. Thank you. Good morning, Chairperson Espinal and members of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I'm Corinne Schiff, Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Health at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. I'm joined by my colleagues from the New York Police Department. On behalf of Commissioner Bassett, thank you for the opportunity to testify on Introduction 970, which relates to the use of under-fire char broilers on mobile food vending units. The department is charged with permitting mobile food vending carts and trucks and with licensing vendors who work on the permitted units. <clears throat> we conduct pre-permit inspections to check that the unit's equipment and facilities meet the requirements of the health code and we conduct unannounced inspections to evaluate food safety practices while the carts and trucks are operating. The top priority for our inspectors is to prevent foodborne illness and promote safe food operations. Introduction 970 would prohibit under-fire char broilers on food carts and trucks. Under-fire char broilers are slatted grills that have a heat source underneath. When meats, poultry, or seafood are grilled on the char broiler, fats and oils drip onto the heat source and this produces a type of atmospheric fine particulate matter known as PM2.5, which is a contributor to air pollution. Exposure to PM2.5 can contribute to or worsen serious health problems, including heart and lung diseases. The department supports limiting under-fire charbroilers as part of the city's effort to reduce sources of air pollution and to protect vendors who may be routinely exposed to PM2.5 when using this equipment. The department will be able to integrate a compliance check for this requirement during new, and new permit and permit renewal inspections. The department looks forward to discussing this bill further with council to ensure that the appropriate units are covered. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I would be happy to take questions. Good morning, Chair Espinal and members of the council. I am Oleg Tranovsky, the Director of Legislative Affairs for the New York City Police Department. In addition to my colleagues from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, I'm joined here today with uh, Deputy Inspector Kenneth Aubey, the commanding officer of the NYPD's World Trade Center Command. On behalf of Police Commissioner James P. O'Neill, I'm pleased to testify before your committee today on the bills under consideration. At the outset of my testimony, I'd like to state that the NYPD recognizes that lawful street vending is an important part of the commercial history of our city. What often makes New York so unique from other locations is its ability to foster economic opportunity for its citizenry. And legal street vending contributes much to the charm and character of our city. 
enforcement of the city's vending laws and regulations is part of the myriad responsibilities that are entrusted to our patrol officers. While the department respects an individual's right to earn a living for themselves and for their families, this must be done in an environment that is safe for all. Intro 959 would amend the administrative code to expand the prohibited street vending zone around the World Trade Center. The NYPD supports this legislation. The current pro prohibited zone is bounded on the east by the easterly side of Broadway, on the south by the southerly side of Liberty Street, on the west by the westerly side of West Street, and on the north by the northerly side of Vesey Street. The current boundaries of the zone were established pursuant to a state law in 2004 that amended the administrative code. This was just three years after the devastating terrorist attacks that took place on September 11, 2001, and the World Trade Center site was still largely a cleanup and construction area. This site, was changed, this site has changed dramatically over the last 14 years. The redevelopment, the redeveloped World Trade Center campus has experienced greater use on all fronts. From the unveiling of the Freedom Tower, the September 11th Museum and Memorial, the Oculus, Liberty Park, Westfield Mall, and, and Path Train Station, to the commercial tenants moving into three office buildings, the site's visitors have significantly increased the area's foot traffic. The expansion is by no means done. Just this week, three World Trade Center, the, the fifth largest building in New York City, opened. In addition, there are currently plans to add two more high-rise buildings to the location. Simultaneously, the NYPD and our law enforcement partners at the New York and New Jersey Port Authority have increased our security footprint by establishing multiple screening and credentialing locations at the World Trade Center campus's borders, each with security, each with security checkpoints, sally ports, vehicle barriers, and full-time police staffing. Consequently, the increased security footprint in the area has expanded beyond the vending zone boundaries that were established in 2004. The presence of fixed site security posts, staffed 24 hours and seven days a week, changes the dynamic of particular points of the World Trade Center campus and requires an adjustment to the city's law to move vendors from parts of the site. Compounding this issue is that the equipment utilized by some food and general vendors raises security concerns in this particularly sensitive location. The carts, tables, and equipment used by vendors could provide a means to conceal and introduce dangerous and or hazardous materials into the sally port and security areas of the campus. Many of the vendors use propane tanks, gasoline, and other flammable materials that the vendors often legally operate either next to or close to the campus's security checkpoints, which, is at, which at times does interfere with the line of sight of the personnel staffing these checkpoints. Given the modus operandi of the perpetrators of recent terrorist attacks consisting of small arms and improvised explosive devices, vending carts can easily be turned into weapons. The purpose could be to cause significant casualties or neutralize security and vehicle barriers. Over the last several years, as in Times Square and Lower Manhattan, the city has witnessed how important bollards and other vehicle obstructions can be in containing a, dead, a deadly incident. These concerns are particularly manifest given that the World Trade Center was the site of two deadly terrorist attacks and remains a terrorist target today. Over the last four years, as more buildings on the campus have opened, there has been an increase in security threats against the World Trade Center. We are thankful to several members of the Council and their staffs who have toured the campus boundaries with us to get an in-person glimpse at the situation. I want to be clear. Our concerns are rooted in the unique conditions that exist at the World Trade Center, not the individual vendors who currently operate at the site. We know that these vendors are an important part of Lower Manhattan, of the Lower Manhattan community, and they are hardworking individuals. The presence of vendors, however, can often can soften an, an officer's vigilance 
when similar, similar looking equipment being used to hide explosive is placed near the barriers where the legitimate vendors typically ply their trade. Intro 959 represents a reasonable update to the law. The bill accounts for the increased security footprint in the area and captures streets that contain security checkpoints, sally ports, vehicle barriers, and other security features. In most cases, the bill simply expands the zone by a block and accounts for other side streets. The NYPD acknowledges that this proposal may be disruptive to certain food and general vendors. As with any new law or regulation, prior to enforcement, the NYPD will conduct outreach with these vendors to educate them on the boundaries of the, of the new restricted zone. We appreciate the efforts made by the Council to accommodate our concerns, and we look forward to working with the Council and other stakeholders on this legislation. Intro 969 would prohibit stoop line stands as well as food and general vending on certain streets and boundaries in Flushing, Queens. We recognize that vending and sidewalk congestion are particularly pronounced in Flushing and precinct personnel have engaged in efforts to allow greater pedestrian access in this area. We look forward to additional discussions with the sponsor of this bill to further this goal. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My colleagues and I would be happy to answer your questions. Um, thank you for your testimony. Before I, I ask any questions, I just want to give my colleagues the opportunity to go first. So, uh, Margaret. Thank you. Um, can you uh, talk about the, uh, the boundary, right? Because uh, you were saying that um, you were sort of expanding it a block um, north and about each way. Um, can you talk about some of the area that we talked about that we could possibly exclude out of there? Um, and also, can you explain to me um, what is the, the security issue for the area of Church Street between Vesey and Barclay, uh, West Street uh, between Vesey and Barclay, and also Trinity Place between Liberty and Thames Street. Sure, uh, Council Member, before I let um, Deputy Inspector Aubie handle those specific questions, uh, he's the commanding officer of the World Trade Center Command. Uh, to address one of the points you made early on, I think our original request uh, for the security footprint was larger. It wasn't until we had done the walkthrough with you that you had pointed to certain areas that we were seeking to exclude, um, and we made uh, alterations and we we re uh, reexamined our our security proposal. So, for example, uh, vendors around Zakati Park, as you mentioned um, during your testimony, I think it's Cedar Street and Broadway up on that part of Cedar Street. Uh, vending on Broadway between, I believe, Vesey and Barclay. Those are just a couple of areas that were originally part of our security footprint, but we um, we uh, realigned after after we did the walkthrough with you. But I'll let um, I'll let Inspector Aubie talk more specifically about some of the uh, blocks that you'd mentioned. Hi. Good morning. Um, with regards to West Street and between Vesey and Barclay, we have one of our Raptor barriers that is an exit from the campus that is a concern of vendors, uh, just like the entire campus vendors setting up um, right next to that exit Raptor barrier. Um, regards to Church Street, uh, we have the same concerns. These are, as the campus is expanding, uh, these Raptor barriers are coming online and as more vehicular traffic is being able to be put into the site, uh, we need, uh, these raptor barriers are, are coming online as well. Um, so those are the two. I didn't catch that last one that you asked about. So the same as with Trinity Place between yes. Liberty and Thames Street? The Liberty and Thames is an exit uh, raptor barrier from coming down Greenwich Street. 
by Liberty and Thames, and that's also part of where our vehicle screening uh, area is. It has a lot of equipment. There's a lot of ballards and um, raptor barrier equipment that these uh, vending carts would either obstruct or would have to set up in a, secu you know, in a security zone that we're not comfortable with next to these. Explain what a raptor barrier is. Okay. So explaining what a raptor barrier basically is are the, the forks, you know, uh, in the ground that, that are hydraulically um, put up and down. So we have a booth, the officers are in there, they, they control that, who, you know. So that's like a sally port? We uh, call that's it? part of the sally port, yes. So it's, it has those um, concrete fingers that come up that prevents vehicles from entering the site. So it has to be, it's, it's manned by my officers inside a booth. And when people are authorized to go in or, go, or leave, they have to have a clear line of sight from other officers on part of the campus and uh, vending uh, carts over there obst obstruct their view. One of the questions that was asked to us is like, why is there a farmer's market um, that was allowed to be in the security zone? So the farmer's market is weekly and that is on, uh, authorized by the Octolus. And when the farmer's market comes in, they come in with the uh, box truck and are fully vetted through a regular vehicle screening through the World Trade Center security. And then once they are cleared, they drop off their material and then they, they sell their farm. It's on private property of the Oculus. But they also had to go through certain security. They have to go through the whole, whatever delivery that comes into the World Trade Center site, they go through that, that whole process of going down into the vehicle screening center and being screened for everything and uh, they set up on a private property area of the Octolus there. So approximately how many uh, vendors do you estimate is gonna be affected by this legislation? I, I would say uh, in a ballpark of, of maybe, t maybe 10. I don't have an exact number since the, it changes you know, frequently of where, where they are you know, set up, but I would say approximately 10. So have you been like, um, in anticipation of this legislation, have there been any kind of discussion uh, between NYPD and some of the vendors who's been vending in that area? Well, we have a good relationship with the vendors at the, in the area. They're actually, they, they, they're another set of eyes for us. So it's, it's you know, um, we have alerted some of the vendors at some of the, you know, the West Broadway and Barclay, where the new uh, Sally Port is coming online, where the new, uh, three World Trade Center has just opened um, on the credentialing center on West Street going northbound that credentialing center over there um, we've have informed that you know they're gonna have to move a certain way before you know obviously once this bill passes if this bill passes. will you continue to work with us to make sure that the expansion is as narrow as possible and affect us as, as uh, you know as a small number of vendors as possible yes yeah, we, I think through the course of uh, the process of the legislation, we would look forward to having more continued um, discussion to make sure that the least impact is possible. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Margaret. Peter? Uh, Mr. Chanyaski, yeah. And Deputy Inspector uh, Albi, right? Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. So my question to you is, have you ever visited Flushing? Have you ever been to Flushing in the, in the, in the, the recently? Huh? I, I have not recently. Uh, yeah, and you, sir? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. How, how long ago? About three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. So did you walk on the street? I was driving. Uh, which, which area you walk? Uh, around Main Street. Main Street? Yes. So have you? Encounter pictures like this. Right. All these obstructions. You want to take a look? Yes. Yeah, I want to. I encourage you to take a look because I don't like. Yeah, Council Member, we we brought the Special Operations Lieutenant from the 109th Precinct, anticipating that you may have question specific to to the 109 in particular the the downtown flushing area 
So I think the best person, if we're talking about the conditions on the particular streets, we brought individual from, uh, uh, from that precinct. So I was wondering, uh, how come you don't invite uh, any officers, uh, especially the community officers from 109 precinct uh, to come here uh, to testify or to talk about it? Instead of you, you, you sit in the office in 1PD, 1PP, you never been to Flushing. How can you like, testify for this, uh, for this bill? Well, I mean, as... I mean, you have no offices from 109 no, precinct. I understand. Right here, sitting to my right, is the special ops lieutenant from the 109th precinct. So I... This is uh, inspector? Uh, lieutenant. Yeah, but you, you, you didn't station in 109, though, right? I've been in the 109 for two years. Huh? I've been in the 109 for two years now. Two years now? And how come I don't know you? I have no idea. Huh? How come? <laughs> I'm, I'm very surprised. You know, I don't know. Uh, uh, inspector can, can, from can he please yeah. state his name for the record? Hmm. Lieutenant Christopher Lopolis. So uh, I, I'm also curious by the statement you made here. Uh, and and uh, you said, pleasing personnel engage in efforts to allow greater pedestrian access in this area. So how do you do it? You station a police officer there to at the subway station or on the sidewalk, or what do you do? Council member, to be honest with you, we have, as you, I'm sure you see, we have a very uh, vast deployment in downtown Flushing. You have the neighborhood coordination officers out there. You have traffic agents directing traffic. We have Skywatch. We have the sectors driving around. We do various vendor operations throughout the year to clear out the sidewalks. No. I'm the one who walk on the sidewalk every day, four or five times a day. Because I go to office, walk in, come back, lunch, go to meetings, four or five times. And I use the subway eh, almost every day and the long railroad entrance. No, I have been in fashion for 35 years. It's, the problem is getting worse and worse. No, as you can see from these pictures. I'm so surprised you gave us a statement to say we are open to open discussions. There's nothing to discuss. This is already a fact. Flushing has been crowded for the last like, 15 years. And vendors come in. And the last thing the police want to do is take care of the, the, uh, the vendors. Every day I see a police car parked next to the vendor. Nothing happened. Every day. Because we have a, a sky watch, a sky lift there. Even the police cars there, and, and next to the uh, police car, there are all kinds of vendors. There are people selling vegetables on the streets, well, uh, uh, selling clothes, selling counterfeiting. Police never bother them. Well, council member, when I first moved to Flushing, vendors when they see a police car come by, they all run away. Now the the vendors are, are, are they, the police family there. Yeah. Right, police family to the vendors. I have nothing against the vendors, but we just want our sidewalks back, okay? Keep, because I, every day when they take the train, take the long walk, customers and the pedestrians always sit in this meal, always complain about this thing. How come we have to navigate around these vendors to walk on the streets, to go to the station? Uh, am I taking bribes from the merchants or from the vendors? It's NYPD is taking bribes from, from certain uh, people. They don't do anything. No, so I, 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 I mean, council so members. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping you take this matter very seriously. This is not a local matter. Flushing is really important. There's a saying, the whole world is looking at Flushing. Oh, no, the whole world is looking at New York, right? New York is such an important city. And New York is looking at Flushing because we produce a lot of revenues for New York City. Either tax revenues, sales re revenues, all these things. We just want our streets back, that's it. So we can walk easily. We don't have to like compete with the, the vendors. So I hope you will be more locally sensitive. Now, World Trade Center, you've taken a big issue. You gave a long statement. Fashion is not important to you. To one PP? Flushing, flushing is very important to us. And F I, I flushing think is one of the busiest transit hubs. 
every day more than 100,000 people walk by a certain point on Main Street. More than 100, and we have 24 bus lines. We create more like, economic activities more than other parts of the town. So I hope you will take this very seriously and go back and discuss this and make sure the police make a concerted effort to enforce the law once this is passed. Thank you. I just have one question. Um, what sort of outreach is the NYPD looking to do to inform vendors that they shouldn't be in those zones? So, uh, I mean, any time um, anytime a new regulation such as this is passed, for example, if parking, there are parking um, uh, restriction adjustments, uh, what we try to do is have somewhat of a grace period um, where it's necessary, where this is something that's unannounced and happens quickly. If the legislation were to pass, what we would do is on the front end, before the effective date, we would speak to the impacted individuals, the impacted vendors, have a conversation with them, let them know that as of a particular date, and I'm not talking about contact, making contact with them a day before or two days before the law would take effect, but uh, generally the way the legislative process works is we would have enough of a, uh, enough of a lead time that we would interact with these vendors. The inspector said um, that sitting next to me that they have regular contact with the vendors around the World Trade Center campus. Um, so we would have the contact with them. We would speak to them. We would alert them that as of a particular day, the restriction or the border would shift to wherever that border would shift to. And, um, and yeah, so we're not looking, what we're not looking to do is to start writing summonses immediately with no warning. That's not the intent. The intent is to protect a very sensitive site that I think everybody recognizes, if not in the country, in the city, and in the world, that the World Trade Center site is a very, very unique site. So when we make this, this minimal expansion, we fully intend on, on collaborating with the impacted vendors. All right. And just to stay clear for the record, your, your original plan was much broader than what Margaret Chin was able to. Yes, recall. it wasn't, I mean, and I'm being honest here, that you know, it wasn't until the council member did a walkthrough and block by block walkthrough of, our, of the security zone that we were looking to implement that there was a, a conversation, a weeks long conversation, a uh, number of weeks that went on where, where there were conversations, but what about this block? How about this side of the street versus that side of the street? And so the, it was, the council member did take a very thoughtful approach with moving forward. Yes, absolutely. Have the table. So thank, thank you, Margaret, for that. And again, just for the record to make it clear, this is a public safety issue, not because of the vendors, but because the area, you need the area clear so you can be able to do your work and make sure that there are no uh, threats to public safety. Absolutely, and I mean, I, I, you know, I think it's worth saying that, you know, if you think about our patrol precincts around the city, the 77 patrol precincts, including uh, Central Park Precinct, they report to the chief of patrol. The World Trade Center Command, who Inspector Robbie is the commanding officer of, reports to the chief of counterterrorism. So it just speaks to the gravity of the location. All right. Thank you. Brad, Brad Lander. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and thank you guys for being here. Um, so. Is one of you, I guess, my question, who's responsible for overall vendor policy within the administration? Uh, I mean, I think it would depend. I think uh, if you look at the sections of the codes of the laws that they fall under, for example, uh, Department of Consumer Affairs would be in charge of, um, of uh, general vendors. And uh, my colleague could correct me if I'm wrong, whether it's health or consumer affairs governs the food vendor rules, I'm not sure. Health department uh, addresses the food safety issues. 
Is there anyone at City Hall or anywhere within the administration that has responsibility for coordinating the policies across what's the responsibility of the Department of Consumer Affairs, the responsibility of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and the responsibilities of the NYPD? Sure. The mayor's office and deputy mayor's uh, deputy mayor coordinates across agencies the, the policies with the mayor. The mayor is responsible for coordinating vendor policy. I mean, I don't well, mean to be to be uh, f facetious or obnoxious about it. I, I'm genuinely curious. This is a really complex area. We would benefit from actually having a coordinated policy. I think a lot of the opposition and concern to what we're talking about today is the result of a lack of thoughtful approach to a more comprehensive policy. And I genuinely don't know who the person in the administration who has the responsibility for w developing and working with us on that policy is. So I, I would genuinely like to know so that we could work with that person to follow up on a more comprehensive and thoughtful approach to vendor policy. And I don't, if you don't know, if there is, if you don't know, that's okay. No, I, I mean, it's put you on the spot. I, just, I don't think there is one. I don't know who that person is. Sure. And I, without that, I don't see how we're going to develop a more thoughtful and comprehensive policy. Right. So the the mayor's office of operations with the first deputy mayor are coordinating the city would coordinate the citywide policy but, with. Respect. But I'm not going to bother no, no, Dean about it. Is there I, someone on Dean's team who's responsible so if I can, for coordinating vendor policy? Sure. If I can finish, what I'm saying is that. After the hearing's over, I can get you a name and put you in touch with a specific individual. So, so that would be great. And I, I really, I mean, part of the reason why we are, we've got an issue here is that we had hoped to work with the administration to, de to develop a more comprehensive policy that speaks to what are the right zones and what aren't the right zones? How do we deal with the issue of the black market? How do we deal with the making room for more vendors? Like, and those issues, of course, all fit together as soon as you restrict vendors from one area, just as we're seeing today. Another uh, community is going to say, we would like to restrict, and then a new bill goes on the table, and now there's more and more restrictions, and there's no comprehensive or thoughtful policy. And if we hadn't been close to developing one, then maybe it would be different. But we, we tried on our end. We hit a lot of barriers. And, and I haven't seen the administration work proactively to develop a more thoughtful and comprehensive policy, or at least no one has been in touch with, with me about it. So I'll, I'll, I'll take you at your, at your word, and I'll, I'll look forward to getting someone that we can talk with about doing that. But I, what I'm hopeful for is that we could actually use this as an opportunity to develop a, a, a broader policy rather than try to scrap it out you know, street by street, which I think is not a good way to do it here, and I think not a good way to do it uh, more broadly. Um, so, and I guess I just like, if, um, even just on the security issues, I mean, if we are genuinely fearful, as you say in your testimony, that vending carts could be turned into weapons, like, it seems like Times Square and Central Park and Madison Park would all be places people would be saying, should we have vendors in or not? Am I, so what's unique? I mean, wasn't there an attempted terrorist, haven't there been attempted terrorist attacks in Times Square and other high-level targets or so other high I just want to, I just want to clarify. The question is what's unique about the World Trade Center campus as opposed to any other well, spot in the city? Well, no, I guess let me maybe ask it this way. Are you saying you won't come back to us and say that other areas present security risks and that therefore you're going to seek to restrict vending in those areas? I mean, if... God forbid another area falls victim to the type of attack which is the worst attack in the nation's history, that we develop the types of protocols and the type of security apparatus that we did at the World Trade Center, maybe we very well would come back to you. But, but as it stands today, the World Trade Center, I would hope that you would agree, is unique in that it's been the site of two terrorist attacks, one of which was the worst attack in the nation's history. We lost a number of individuals there. Um, the site has been developed. The council, the legislators have recognized the security needs of this location by creating a restricted zone within it. The, the truth of the matter is that the, the campus has grown outside of the restricted footprint. And what the suggestion in the bill is, is a minimal, minimal expansion to move vending carts away from Raptor barriers that are built to protect the facility against truck bombs, I, I would think that's obvious on its face. 
Okay. I mean, I think we worry a lot about Times Square. I think we worry a lot about a whole other set of locations where there are bollards. I'm not, it's not to me obvious on its face where vendors are and aren't a risk. And I don't think we have any, I don't understand or I don't see in place a policy that would help me evaluate that. I mean, so I, I understand I you want these that. couple blocks, but I don't know wh how they're the same or different from some blocks near Times Square or some blocks near Madison Park or some blocks near Central Park, which have tons of New Yorkers and tourists that we want to protect from harm, and that you guys, the NYPD, put enormous energy into keeping us safe. So um, let me ask specifically about the site footprint, though, as well, just because uh, you've mentioned it now, and you know, it's, and I don't know it nearly as well, and I certainly on her district uh, have a lot of deference to, to Councilmember Chin, but I, I, it's, I've been, I guess it is my understanding both that there's a farmer's market that's on this site some of the time, and that also at different times of the week, there's really different levels of crowds. So um, why is the farmer's market appropriate? Is it in this, I don't even know if it's in the same location, why is it appropriate if vending isn't? And did you think at all about time of day or time of week restrictions to uh, about, you know, as to account for when there's different levels of so, uh, activity? So, with respect to the farmer's market, as, as the inspector had testified previously, the farmer's market is in a spot that is private property. It is, that this is the, I believe it's the Oculus. The Oculus, yes. the Oculus that rents this property. I would assume they rent it or has some means of permitting it. The box truck that brings the vegetables to that farmer market undergoes the same security checks as any delivery to any building, which is extensive to say the least. Um, in terms of times of day restrictions, the threat to the World Trade Center is 24-7. The security booths and the security personnel man those booths and man the perimeter and the interior of that campus 24-7. The threat to the World Trade Center does not dissipate based on the time of day it is. And I'll be honest with you, I, I really thought coming here that we would have many conversations exploring this topic. The uniqueness of the World Trade Center site, I did not believe would be one of them. Oh, like I, I'm not sure that's helpful. Like to ask me whether I care and see the uniqueness of the attacks on the World Trade Center site as part of trying to make sure we have comprehensive and thoughtful vendor policy. It, uh, anyway, well, that I, 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 I agree if, with if you that you we want to give I, that to me back as like I agree a that we should have for asking you reasonable I, questions about whether we do or don't have a comprehensive vendor policy. Well, you're welcome to do it, but it's not going to help us figure out what the right answer to this or other problems. Un is. Understood and. With respect to a uniform vendor policy citywide, I think I was clear in my testimony that it's part of the larger conversation. What we're speaking about is the uniqueness of a specific zone that, but, but in, you your, in your question, you, you're likening. You just insulted me, and, and I, I'm and not. And I apologize the, if you felt that well, was an so insult. From the but your questions are comparing the what is the unique nature of the site compared to as any other to vending as compared to any other block in the city and the reality is that you know Times Square although it's a very serious target is different all of because the sites around the city are different. Because it wasn't previously attacked I guess is what you're saying or at least the previous attack was not successful in killing a lot of people. It, the because it has been attacked multiple, t or there were attempts to attack. There, there, were, there was times. an attempt, and there are ongoing threats, but it is a different area in the setup of the security perimeter. I mean, there are not raptor barriers surrounding the, the Times Square zone. There are just differences. I mean, I welcome you, and I'll walk around with, with you around the World Trade Center campus, and we can do the same tour. And uh, what I was saying was not meant to be an insult towards you, but I just don't think that the security needs of the World Trade Center campus can truly wait until a generalized citywide policy is developed. There is an ongoing threat to this particular area. That threat has been recognized by the legislature in creating the restricted zone initially. And what we're looking to do here is bump it out a block here and there 
to account for the security booths and the security so, raptors that were put in place. So I really understand why the NYPD looks at it that way, and I appreciate your thinking about it that way, but, and that's part of our job. And also part of our job is to look at it from the point of view of a set of vendors who believe they're going to lose their livelihoods as a result of the bill we're being asked to support. So there is a risk to public safety and terrorism and a set of pedestrian issues that are on the table here that it's our responsibility to weigh. And so are there the potential loss of livelihood from a set of real people, some of whom are in the room today, who much more quickly than anything's going to change from a point of view of security and safety and terrorism will no longer have the place in which they've earned their living. And so trying to think about what we do here and how that relates to our vending policy and what kinds of opportunities there are, I think is part of my job. And when we were looking at a comprehensive policy that thought about appropriate locations that could have included security as a big part of the questions for appropriate locations, but tried to do that in a way that was also thoughtful about where people could and couldn't bend and how to balance the interests of a whole different set of sets of people, that seemed to me like a lot better way of doing it than this. Um, so I, I appreciate your testimony. I'm not going to take any more time from the questioning. Um, but I'm, I'm not really persuaded, at least by the testimony you've given so far, that the unique threat presented specifically by vendors to uniquely the World Trade Center site is so clear and specific and obvious on its face that it merits, instead of us making thoughtful, comprehensive vendor policy, us putting a few people out of their jobs and saying maybe at some point in the future we'll be more thoughtful about what our comprehensive vending policy should be. Sure, and, and just Thank to clarify you. that, uh, that yeah. I, I just want to make this point clear that at no point are we saying that a particular vendor is the threat, it's the conveyance. It's a the metal box that could be used I, to conceal. I'm not for one that, minute. Brad, I'm right. So I just want to make it clear uh, that I'm, I'm that, gonna I'm right. gonna I'm gonna have to cut time because we actually have to prepare the room at 1:30 for status so we can vote out the budget this year's uh, fiscal year 19 budget 12:30 12:30. So um, I'm gonna ask my colleagues to please be mindful of, of our time, our limited time. I usually don't put a clock, but um, I might have to after this panel. Thank you. I yield the remainder of my time. Karen Kozlowitz. I just want to say I worked on vendors in the 90s. I was the chair of the Consumer Affairs. And vending was one of the biggest issues that we dealt with. There's a lot of legislation. Under the Giuliani administration, there was supposed to be a vendor review panel consisting of DOT, NYPD, Consumer Affairs, and a few other agencies. That never happened. And I think it's time that it happens now, that we have someone that, a group of agencies that know what is going on throughout the city to address problems with, with the street vendors. These men have to make a living. They're entitled to make a living and constantly they're being picked on, and I think this has to stop. And I think if we have this review panel, things will be a lot different. We'll take care of Council Member Ku's issue, because sometimes it just gets out of hand. But other times, we need these people to earn a living and keep up with New York City. So I'm going to um, introduce legislation to have a vendor review panel for the vendors. Thank you, Karen. Um, we've also been joined by uh, Carlos Menchaca, who was not a member of the committee, but he felt this issue was very important to him, which is why he's here. Thank you to the chair, to the members of this committee, the council, and everyone here today who are here to make your voices heard. Uh, and in the spirit of the chair's want for us to kind of focus a little bit and shorten the time, I, I will focus a on a few items. I think what's, what's really great about what you just heard from uh, the last two members that I was able to hear today um, is the willingness to sit down and solve some problems that we all have in the city in the name of safety, in the name of economic development, in the name of ensuring that we will have the trust of the public to work with us on all those things. And I feel like this move, I am also not convinced, 
that this is a move that we need to do right now in this swift way without the kind of engagement on the issue that's going to have a positive impact across across the board. And so we are hitting yet this next core, we're hitting the same chord of a motion, a move from the NYPD that in the name of safety actually makes us less safe. And so the next qu set of questions I want to really think about with you today. And the first thing is, this proposal is a, a removal of, of space for vending. What prevents you from creating a rule that allows you to maybe, and this is an idea that's coming from the community, uh, so if it's, if it's already been answered, I want to hear the answer to that. A rule that basically gives you an X amount of feet away from the, um, I think they're called movable barricades or movable uh, barriers. And have you considered that as an option? Uh, no, I mean, we, we have not. Uh, Can you consider that as an option? A certain amount of feet from? From any uh, movable barricades for well, entranceways into, into, into the area. Uh, this is part of the conversation that is right. happening right now that is not able to happen because there's a one solution on the table that you are really trying to push right now. I think the other idea is you've mentioned the carts itself, these metal barricades. Well, I just want, before you move on, I, okay. you know, the, the way you phrase your question about, you know, a certain amount of feet from movable barriers. I took that to mean around the whole entire city. So no, we have not. My answer to your question was, are we thinking of some grander restrictions citywide? And no, that, it, that is not what we're thinking. And my answer was that, you know, what we're focused on is a particular site, a particular unique site that we need to secure. Now, I'll make you the same offer that I've made Council Member Lander and Council Member Chin had taken us up on this offer is let's take a walk through the area. Uh, we would like for you to see right. how close the carts are to the security booth, to the raptor barriers, right. to more all of our security. More information yeah, is and, good. So and yes, that's, I right. say yes. Right, Absolutely. and that's where the council Thank member, you. when she had walked through, she had recognized, yes, these areas are particular, I can see what you're saying, These are there are issues here. And then she pointed to other areas and say, well, why there, right? Great. And that's why over the weeks I'm after saying our, yes. yes, let's go. No, I understand. Let's go, I wanna learn more. Right. Right. I want to really learn as much as I can. And the second piece to this is the focus on the carts themselves. Mm -hmm. And the carts you're seeing are, are, are danger that you want to remove to secure. What we're saying is, and, not, and the we is, the community of vendors are saying, why don't you just search them, create an opportunity to search them before they go into the space to be able to be able to do the work that they're doing and vend. Because in the safety of your process that you can create that'll make you feel good about the securing component, but allow for the economic development of these vendors that want a livelihood for themselves and have been there for a long time and have created a lot of relationship with folks that rely on them. Sure. So two points. So Please. line of sight, and we've spoken about this, that's point number one, obviously, you know, the Say that again? Live line sight? of sight. Okay. Right. Line of sight. Line of sight, okay. right, by our security personnel and having large obstructions next to the barriers, next to the entry points where we have controlled access to the campus. That's, that's one area. The, the, that's one point. The second point is, is there is no absolute right in the city to have a particular spot on a sidewalk right? The vending rules aren't built that way. They don't give Council Member Menchaca the right to stand here and vend. It's truly a first come, first serve, right? So we understand that a lot of times the same vendors go to the same block, you know, but that's not a level of control that the department has. We can't say you could be here or you can't be here to a particular vendor. If the spot is legal, arguably any vendor can go to that particular spot. So once you allow, once you create a zone where you can't be, anytime you see a conveyance that we see as a potential, potential danger coming into that zone, we know that they shouldn't be there. It's not a matter of searching all day long who comes and goes, but it's a matter of you could either be there or you can't be there. 
So if you can be there, anybody can be there. If you can't be there, no one can be there. Yeah, it's such a blunt force of, of positioning here that removes the fuller understanding of safety in our city. We are, we are doing something right now that's creating a mistrust, uh, uh, frustration, disappointment with an agency that needs more than just lines of sight, uh, a, a sense of, of, of all or nothing, and needs people to connect to you, to give you information. And I bet if we ask any one of these vendors that have been there, they've been cooperating with you to give you good information, solid information in the name of safety. We're losing that social fabric here in this move. And I, I just, I, I feel like NYPD, do, you guys do such a great job of like doing good things here and then, and then being inconsistent in your, in your decisions in places like this. And I think, I think it's incredibly myopic in this move. And I hope that you can, you can slow this process down, engage the community, ask them how they can be a part of this public safety measure, and we can work together. And like Karen said, our, our uh, council member Kozlowitz said, uh, we, we have a lot of history in this. Let's stop, let's do this big move that, that brings everybody in, not pushes people out in the name of public safety. And that's my final request to all of you today. And thank you so much for your time. Chair, if you, if you have any response to that, uh, I'm welcome to it, but let's keep talking. Thank you, Carlos. And thank you to NYPD for testifying. Uh, we're gonna call up the next panel. Oh, Coop, sorry, sorry. We have one more question from Council Member Coop. I don't leave yet, yeah, one more question for you. So, uh, Mr. Chanaski, right? So, uh, the reason I introduced this bill is because I have numerous discussions uh, with 109 precinct for the last 10 years. Because every time uh, I talk about this problem, they say, hey, councilman, you know, we have a big problem to uh, tell them which are, fa uh, are good vendors and which are not good vendors. So if I make a bill uh, stopping uh, sidewalk obstructions, then it's easy for them. So it's not that. I want to get the vendors out. I just want to move the vendors outside to a lesser dense areas, okay? Outside the transit hubs. So I want to say that uh, the, the 109 precinct, they have been doing a good, very good job. Every time I ask them to do something, uh, they comply uh, with us. Yeah, we do walkthroughs, uh, we do all these other stuff. And this bill actually was uh, introduced at the suggestion of your community officer, uh, Kevin O'Donnell. I mean, you know, he, he had been telling me that police have a lot of problems enforcing all these little like quality of life issues. If I want to make the job easier for you, for NYPD, I, that's why I didn't do this bill. So I don't want you to think I'm anti-vendors uh, or anti-police, no. I love, I love the NYPD. Oh, well, you guys no, wanna, I, we, yeah. we appreciate yeah. that. And, and you, you're I, one of the best agencies in the city. Thank yeah. you, and I, I didn't take what you were saying. Yeah, sometimes that, I, right. I say it out of my mouth, I get, yeah. no, I get, get frustrated yeah. for so many years, right, frustrations. Right. Uh, people complaining to me there's no solutions for it. That's why finally I introduced this bill uh, to help uh, the residents of uh, Flushing area. So I want to thank you for your service, right? Thank you, uh, and we look yeah. forward to working with you on this. Yeah, and I also want to ask a question for Department of Health. Um, I forgot to ask you is, uh, now how many child ballers you think we have in New York City? How many of them? Do you have a count? So we, we don't have a count. Uh, it's not something that we record. They, whether, whether a unit has this type of equipment is not something we record, so mm. unfortunately we don't have a count mm. for you. So, so, so uh, how, uh, what is the enforcement uh, policy for child brothers? You send inspectors out to chat or what? Well, there, there are no, currently no prohibitions on having an under-fired char broiler uh, unless you meet a threshold of um, meat uh, according to the air code, and we don't think it, mobile food vendors meet that threshold. So there is no prohibition now, so it's not something that is part of the inspection. So, so do you have st statistics like how much particular matters a char broiler you meet uh, uh, like an hour or a day or? So we, we have the estimate that, that we had uh, provided in our testimony that you actually cited mm. in, your, in your opening comments. That was really um, 
an, an estimate to give people a sense of the potential exposure for vendors working uh, at those kinds of carts and trucks with that equipment um, and for New Yorkers in that community. So let me ask you one last question, it's a hypothetical question. It's, would you live upstairs in an apartment if downstairs have charballers working every, every night? Would you live in such a building? Uh, I understand the concerns that you raised in your uh, opening comments, and that's why uh, the health department is supportive of all efforts to improve air quality for all New Yorkers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna set the clock. Again, we have to be out of this room in one hour because of this today's stated meeting on uh, fiscal year 19's budget. Uh, so we're gonna set the clock to one minute and 30 seconds. Uh, I want to call up the next panel. We have uh, Jessica Lappin from Downtown Alliance, Jean, uh, sorry, I mispronounced your name, Kelts, Kelton, Kelton, Kelty, Jean Kelty from Civil Leader, CBY, Queens, George Shuster Jr. from Wilmer Hale, Diang Song Yu from Downtown Flushing Transit Hub. Wesley Sin from FNJ Group, Patrick Kennel from Fi Financial District Neighbor Association. Good morning. I'm Jessica Lappin. Good morning. President nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Nice to be back. Uh, President of the Downtown Alliance, and it's my pleasure to be here today in support of Intro 959. We have written testimony that will be handed to the Sergeant at Arms. Um, Lower Manhattan is New York City's second largest central business district, and we've emerged from the tragedies of 9-11 and Hurricane Sandy to become a model 21st century district. We now have 90 million square feet of commercial real estate, over 61,000 residents, a quarter million jobs, and 1,100 shops and restaurants. More than 14 million visited last year alone. All of this growth is a strain, and it's tough to get around our narrow streets and sidewalks. Street vending has long been part of our landscape, and we recognize that lawful vending is an important part of our city's history and economy. We have 125 vendors in our bid district alone. However, historically, there has been strong and clear consensus by the PD, city and state elected officials, and the local community board that vending on streets around and adjacent to the World Trade Center should be prohibited. Right now, with the opening of Three World Trade, and as this site comes online, there are certain areas at the northern and southern part of the campus that are not within the restricted vending zone, and this bill would correct that. The Alliance strongly supports Intro 959, urges the committee to vote in favor of the bill, and thanks to Council Member Chin for her leadership. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Council Members. My name is Patrick Cannell, and I currently serve as the President of the Financial District Neighborhood Association. As the name suggests, the FIDI Neighborhood Association is a grassroots organization connecting neighbors across New York City's oldest and the fastest growing residential neighborhood in all of New York City. The FIDI Neighborhood Association is here today in support of Intro 959, a bill that would extend slightly the no vending zone around the iconic World Trade Center campus. For many years now, the FIDI Neighborhood Association has sought to advocate for short and long-term uh, interventions to alleviate dangerous pedestrian congestion on FIDI sidewalks by rethinking how we manage our streets and sidewalks. One of the biggest symptoms of pedestrian congestion in Lower Manhattan is the varying kinds of sidewalk obstacles, including food and non-food vendors, among many others, all of which compete for precious space with the tens of thousands of people who live here, the over 350,000 people who work here every day, and the millions who come to visit every year. Yes, New York City is busy and it's crowded. That's a fact of life. But the streetscape of the financial district is different because of its colonial topography and layout. Streets and sidewalks here are generally narrower than in other parts of the city, and that means we have to think about them differently. A June 2016 study by Manhattan Community Board 1 called Streetscape Study of Lower Manhattan, an analysis of sidewalk features and public space of Manhattan Community District 1, confirms the inordinate amount of obstacles on our sidewalks. 
Uh, this bill would take one step forward in addressing the congestion problem here. It's not about banning vendors, many of whom are beloved and provide delicious and interesting services throughout the neighborhood. It's about sensible management of these very narrow sidewalks. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is George Schuster. Okay. Sorry. Good morning. My name is George Schuster. I'm a partner at the law firm Wilmer Cutler Pickering Hale and Door, also known as Wilmer Hale. Uh, about six years ago, we moved our 300 employees, lawyers uh, and staff from Midtown on Park Avenue down to Seven World Trade Center. One of the major considerations in that move was the safety and security of our employees, and we've been quite satisfied uh, with the safety and security that's been provided to date. But we've also seen a lot of changes in the six years that we've been down at Seven World Trade Center. Uh, the new security checkpoints being installed, other buildings coming online, uh, and the level of congestion increasing. And we would like to make sure that the New York Police Department has the tools necessary to continue to keep us safe. I can also say that we're very supportive of the street vendors in the neighborhood. We are their customers. Uh, we are their collaborators in a vibrant economic community downtown. We are their friends. And we do not intend to uh, decrease our frequency of uh, buying food and supplies from the vendors. Uh, we don't think that extending their location by a block will in any way uh, reduce the level of activity that we give to that business, uh, and we look forward to continuing to work with them as uh, partners in the neighborhood going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Gene Kelty. I'm Chair of Community Board 7. I'm also a will soon be retired New York City Battalion Chief from New York City Fire Department. I must say that I am not representing the fire department. I want to go on record with that, so please. I gave you two packages. I don't want to read from them. I just want to tell you the one package I gave, uh, which is um, Councilwoman Chen's uh, recommendation, is we. I have a problem. I was the captain of that firehouse before 9-11 and after 9-11. If you see, I gave you four pictures at the thing. The last, the first two pictures show vending that's going on in front of the, on the side of the firehouse where the memorial wall is, and I think that's one of the streets that you asked to be restricted. I've been trying for the last few years, because my members have asked me to try to resolve that problem. I think it's quite insulting that people, if you look at the two pictures of the family sitting, they're actually sitting on the wooden box that was supposed to be displaying flowers and stuff, and they're eating and drinking at that location. We wouldn't allow that at the Holocaust Museum in Lower Manhattan. We wouldn't allow that in the World in the, uh, the World War I, World War II, Korean, and any of the memorials in Washington, D.C. And I really don't think it's very appropriate. It takes away from the people that we lost on 9-11, the, rep uh, the representatives of the, of the rescue services, the 5,000 people. That's a solemn place. That's what that 9-11 area was supposed to be, a park area and solemn. They don't need to vent at that location. There's other vending locations. If you look at Councilman Koo's, if you look at Councilman Koo's package, I gave you two packages. I was here in 1998, and I testified at that time that this still was a problem with vending. It is 10 years later. The increase is worse, and we think it should be moved down to Maple Avenue because we have one of the largest post offices there that vending constantly goes on. Just to say, I don't object to vending, but I believe in proper vending. I think we have a lot of park areas and stuff where they can be at. They don't need to be taken away the resources of our commercial districts. Uh, I'm the chair, and I've been there for 34 years in the community board and 39 years in the fire department. Thank you. All right. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Dian Song Yu. I'm the manager of the Flushing Bit. Uh, our uh, district mainly covers on Main Street and Roosevelt Avenue, and uh, the Bit is a non-for-profit organization. So as you all know, downtown Flushing is famous for its food, and we're also famous for our congestion, what is car congestion and uh, pedestrian congestion. And uh, one of the things that you know, I want to mention is that especially during like, um, uh, lunchtime, uh, our sidewalk is very congested and uh, I often see people walking on the street and it's very dangerous as I mentioned before because there are so many cars on the street and it's very dangerous. And also I uh, want to uh, point out that sanitation service is a, a major service that we do and our crews work extremely hard uh, to keep downtown flushing clean. I don't think it's fair for them to take on those uh, additional garbage and greasy sidewalks. So I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, my name is Wesley Sims. So today I represent the uh, business owner, also people who work and live in Flushing. Um, I think the, um, the vending vendors, like those um, vendors in Flushing, especially Main Street, has been a problem for years. Especially like doing, I mean, around the building where I work, there are like more than six and seven vendors just in one block. Yeah, so I think, I mean, that's like kind of like not acceptable. And because the Flushing community has recently celebrated the completion of up to nine feet of width on the sidewalk, so I think the sidewalks area should be kept free from any like obstructions. And also for the Bill 970s, for the um, under fire char rollers used by the street vendors. And as I mentioned before, like six to seven vendors around a building, like half of them. I, I, I think maybe a four or five of them are using this kind of um, on the fire chop roller, so it creates like air pollution and also um, affect everyone who works or live around there. Like for myself and my coworkers, we have to avoid walking to a certain area to get to the subway station every day because there are too much smoke. Yeah. So and also, I also agree with the um, the BID, the previous speaker, because we are trying to like um, my company. We are like a developer in Flushing, so we are trying to make Flushing a better place. But this kind of um, street vendor who create like kind of air pollution may be a problem and have negative image to Flushing community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for testifying. Appreciate it. Uh, up next, we have Suzanne Adeli. Albert Fox Can, Le Lena Afridi, Sora Reed, uh, Sheikh Ahmed McBarak, Lu Ling Wang, and Fatin Jarara. Ja 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 I would press the mic, the, the button on the mic. I can begin. Good morning, my name is Suzanne Adeli, and I'm representing the Food Chain Workers Alliance, which is a national organization of 31 worker-based organizations, and including several in New York City where we, we represent uh, some 10,000 workers in New York City alone. Um, I'm here today to speak on behalf of our alliance in opposition to all of the legislation. Um, as many of you know, street vendors um, contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to New York's economy um, by feeding um, New Yorkers and tourists on a daily basis, and that money is then reinvested in their families and in entire communities and reinvested in, in this city. Um, and as we all also know street vendors already face many, many obstacles in being able to work legally and safely in this city. And so um, our alliance is very much in um, disappointed by the efforts to um, continue to pass legislation to make their labor and their lives um, even more difficult than it already is. Um, and just because of the, the, the brevity I'm going to speak um, in more detail just on one piece of this legislation, but the logic and reasoning that we're hearing around um, these proposals um, are not acceptable. In, in particular, the proposal to expand um, sort of the ban on um, street vendors in the downtown Manhattan area from um, what we've heard is, is being justified by security concerns and security threats. And when the majority of these street vendors are of Muslim descent, to us that is a reflection of anti-Muslim bigotry, that our organization and our communities will not sort of allow to sort of be expressed in, in a form like this. Um, I think that, in and, and, and I'm also frankly appalled by the sort of the um, confusing, distracting references to terrorism that were brought up several times today, which are nothing but a distraction from the real issue. And the issue being that we are trying to um, put more value on business interests over the interests of working class people. So I urge you to think about really what safety and security mean in this city. And that means being able to let workers work legally and safely and working alongside with them as partners with street vendors to address all of the issues and the concerns that have been brought up as part of the reasoning of this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is Albert Kahn. I serve as the legal director for the New York chapter of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. And I speak today against Initiative 959, which seeks to block street vendors from numerous sites from throughout lower Manhattan. I have to say, it pains me to be on the opposite side of so many friends who have stood up with the Muslim community in the past, but we can't be silent in the face of a measure that would target so many Muslim New Yorkers and rob them of their livelihoods. This initiative, the double standard that it creates through the discrepancy of food cart vendors and the nearby farmer's market creates a specter of anti-Muslim discrimination and a moment but it is incredibly dangerous and a moment when we see it being echoed by those at the highest levels of our national government. And it's a, a, an episode that is particularly powerful because of the way it resonates with the history of that area, with the history of Park 51, and the way that project became a lightning rod for anti-Muslim bias and bigotry. Even if it is not the intent of anyone on this council, by passing the initiative, you would be giving a PR win to the anti-Muslim extremists who continually seek to paint our Muslim neighbors as a threat and not as the vital and indispensable part of our community that they are. And so I ask you, because time is so short, that you work with the community, that you work with the advocates here today, that you work with all those who are impacted by this move to make sure that we do not remove a single vendor until we have found suitable locations for them to be, uh, be placed, and that we do not simply yield to the justifications of security without being suitably skeptical. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good, uh, uh, good afternoon or good morning. I don't know which one. Uh, my name is Sheikh Ahmed and I represent, I am the executive director of the Islamic Leadership Council of New York, also known as Majlis Shura. I represent over 90 mosques. And uh, I have one question to the NYPD. Um, and that question is why, why did it take you NYPD 17 years to determine that the, the, the vendors and the full falafel and the halal meat? Uh, is a consisting a threat to uh, the, trade, uh, the World Trade Center or any of our sites. How did that happen? I mean, what is the new thing that makes them now think that after 17 years of research, they prove that now these, these guys are a threat to our security? That's one. Two, as the, 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 the two speakers said, we, are, we feel that we're targeted at a, as a Muslim community especially by suspicions from the uh, NYPD and that security paradigm that they have that they use the, the term terrorism and whatever, and they target us. We just learned recently that a, a, a big number, about 90 or 95, whatever, from their investigations, the targets were Muslim. So now targeting another Muslim community because vendors means to me halal food. Halal food and food falafel is secure, is tasty, is delicious, it doesn't co consist in a threat, and it's the Muslim identity. And we're part of that identity of New York. Nobody can remove us, and nobody can make our kids and children starve just because we, uh, we, we look different somehow. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Lena Afridi. I'm the policy coordinator for equitable economic development at the Association for Neighborhood and Housing Development. ANHG is a member organization, New York City neighborhood-based community groups. Uh, we've traditionally worked on affordable housing, but we also fight to support and protect New York City's small businesses from the threat of displacement, with particular focus on owner-operated, low-income, minority, and immigrant-run businesses. These businesses include street vendors. New York street vendors are small businesses. They're central to our neighborhoods and communities and provide jobs and culturally re relevant goods. In a political climate where the lives of working class people of color and immigrants are undervalued, proposed legislations enter 959, which bans vending near the World Trade Center, and enter 969, which bans vending in downtown Flushing, further undermine the livelihoods of hardworking immigrants who already struggle against displacement in New York. Intro 959 in particular has been justified and validated as a precautionary measure against terrorist attacks, yet a nearby farmer's market is set to remain open. Vendors in the area are to, to be displaced, though they are the eyes and ears of our communities. There are also majority people of color, many of Muslim faith. These kinds of policies and measures are an attack on working class communities of color, especially New York's working class Muslims. In a citywide climate where small businesses routinely face displacement, vendors are among the most vulnerable, facing fines, little government support, 
and intimidation. In a nationwide political climate where harassment of Muslims is at an all-time high, Muslim vendors are doubly vulnerable. New York prides itself as a sanctuary city, as a city where all are welcome. We urge the council to uphold the core values of what makes New York the world city. I also want to note that this is the last day of Ramadan, and my fellow Muslims are here fighting not only for their livelihood, but to prove that they're not a threat. And I just want to note that for the council's record. Thank you. My name is Fatin Jarara, and I'm representing myself, a resident of the financial district, and a Muslim vendor myself. I've been serving New York City and beyond for nearly 10 years, believe it or not, as a DJ. So I identify with these vendors over here. Vendors are here to create a community for themselves, to create a livelihood, to make New York City a home away from home. They serve here as geographic guides. They serve here as interpreters and translators. They serve here as good cemeteries to keep the neighborhood safe. And you all have said that they've built strong relationships with you. And I'm honestly appalled that you, who are introducing this bill and also in favor of this bill, who have been served by these vendors, would support this bill. A lot of you, if not all of you, have eaten from their food, have been served by their smiles, and have benefited from their presence in this neighborhood. I don't recognize that you are limiting or narrowing their suffering and their loss because they will, they will lose. What you are creating is loss in, in the face of what you say is loss, loss of communities. You are creating more insecurity. You're creating financial insecurity and personal insecurity for them and their families. And I'm just appalled like I was uh, my, col my, my comrade here on the last day of Ramadan where these vendors, most of them, if not all of them, have been fasting and serving you every day food and you are here talking about limiting their livelihood. And this is very appalling and insulting. My name is Sarah Reed. I work for an organization called Women in Informal Employment, Globalizing and Organizing, um, that works with street vendors and other workers in informal employment around the world. Um, today, I'm representing myself and my own research on, on vending and vendor bans. Um, we find that bans on vending all over the world are so frequently motivated by classism and xenophobia. My research focuses on the roles that vending does play in our cities, which are numerous and diverse. But today I will say something briefly in particular about walkability and safety, since these are the issues at hand. Most empirical research from the US suggests that vendors do not strongly interfere with the speed or efficiency of pedestrian movement. This paradigm, however, assumes that the ability to walk as quickly as possible is the same as walkability, and that's not true. Walkability is about proximity to shops and to amenities. It's about the signs of vitality and pleasantness in life that make urbanites more likely to walk than to drive. A variety of quantitative studies, including one from New York, affirms that vendors is one, are one of these attractions for pedestrians. This vitality, but also the vigilance of vendors, is what makes our city safer. Urban planner Jane Jacobs remarked on the importance of eyes on the street for safe and harmonious urban communities. This was brought home to me one night recently in the city I was living before, Bangkok, Thailand, which is one of the safest in the world, as my phone was snatched out of my hands from a motorcyclist. This was a street that had just recently been emptied of vendors. Um, vendors all over the world view safety as part of and parcel of urban, view their role as part and parcel of urban safety. Um, they almost always have a story of deterring crime or, or uh, preventing a specific tragedy from taking place. I want to echo the, um, the comments from Council Member uh, Landers and Manchaka that a more comprehensive policy would be a better approach to these piecemeal solutions. Thank you. Thank you. I want to call up the next panel. Sean Basinski, Abir Kawas, and Tiang Xiao Young from Street Vendors in Flushing.
Tian? Tian Young? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go first while we also arrange a uh, translation for uh, Mr. Tian. Um, and uh, uh, my name is Sean Bozinski. I'm the co-director of the Street Vendor Project at the Urban Justice Center. And thank you very much. Uh, I'm presenting one third of the Street Vendor Project's testimony here uh, today. Uh, specifically, I'm going to focus on uh, intro 970 about the charbroil grills. And others will discuss other uh, bills. Um, uh, the Street Vendor Project strongly opposes the citywide proposed ban on charbroil grills on all mobile food units. Uh, vendors care about the environment and they do care about their health, their own health. Um, and we may support other proposals that will reduce emissions, uh, but this blanket ban on arch, all charbroilers is an oversimplification uh, to a complex problem and it will destroy many street food businesses. Uh, first, uh, this legislation singles out uh, mobile food vendors while doing nothing about other bad actors who are similarly uh, situated. Uh, the Parks Department provides uh, more than 50 charcoal grills for use in the parks, sanctioned by our own city. Uh, uh, you can go to any street fair, the Feast of San Gennaro, uh, uh, Big Apple Barbecue, and uh, every weekend in the summer and see huge char broilers, much larger than any uh, vending cart uh, are currently in use, wide, uh, widely used with no protection, whereas vending carts uh, uh, do have filters and hoods. And uh, that's not fair. Of course, also, uh, we as citizens are allowed to barbecue uh, in our homes. Uh, secondly, though, very quickly, uh, restaurants have been uh, uh, subject to a special procedure about char broilers, <laughs> whereby uh, current charbroiling facilities are exempt, are grandfathered in. And we would uh, suggest that as a potential solution, uh, not ruining existing businesses, uh, 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 but looking at the future of vending and making sure that is more safe, uh, both for vendors and for our environment. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Abir Kawas, and I work with the Take on Hate campaign that is part of the National Network of Arab American Communities. I'm here in testimony in opposition to all of the legislation. My organization works to empower the Arab American community across the country to take on hate, meaning to stand against racism and bigotry, both interpersonally and in policy. We're especially dedicated to supporting our vulnerable immigrant community in New York, including our street vendors, many of whom work halal carts <coughs> that are <coughs> run by Arab and Muslim constituents. In 2011, I interned for the street vendor project to work specifically with the Arab vendors, and I learned that Arab and Muslim vendors are often harassed by local businesses and the police. It's appalling to know the struggles that these vendors who provide our communities endure every single day to uphold their modest businesses. And it's because our city restricts them to access permits, um, tickets them with heavy fines, and bans them from selling in certain locations that they are criminalized for making a living. This proposed legislation only perpetuates those dynamics and causes more people to lose their businesses and livelihood. Coming from an Arab organization, I specifically want to speak to the legislation that allows the restriction of vendors from selling around the World Trade Center, while allowing farmers markets to continue to sell in that same area and citing security threats as a reasoning for this. I see this as a racial <coughs> dynamic that p punishes people of color, and especially the Arab and Muslim vendors, who've already suffered from law enforcement policies from our city that have surveilled their communities for years. Again, we are being targeted by law enforcement because of the location of where we're selling. I, wa I want to remind you all that right now, at this time, in our country, we're currently living under a current Muslim ban. That will for sure go down as a dark period in our history, and this local policy is just another manifestation of a ban against our people. I want to remind everyone in 2010 that Islamophobic advocates in our city fought to stop the building of the Park 51 mosque in the same World Trade Center area. They fought to limit the freedom of religion of Muslims, all because they conflated Islam with the attacks on 9-11. On the restriction of vendors in the same area, no doubt, is inherently Islamophobic and it's racist and targets specific communities to further push them out of a space that is meant for commemoration and healing. 
By allowing this to pass, we only allow hate to win. We go against our values as inclusive New Yorkers, and we continue to criminalize immigrant communities. I just want to reiterate that under this tumultuous history in, in America, in New York City, we have declared ourselves a sanctuary city. And that means that we, not must, we must not only be protective, but we must also be preventative. And we can't continue the targeting of our, of our immigrant communities. So the Take on Hate campaign urges City Council to stop criminalizing street vendors and to listen to their voices and to help New York City's immigrant workers better serve our beloved city. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, what you all Uh我是在法拉省搞那个巴迪克啊已经搞了二十多年了我们的前一次长彭博和好比我们前一次的这个医院啊都提倡法拉省的消伤搞活法拉省搞活纽约市外外边的人来法拉省搞增伤也就是
um, that we should we should consider the laws from all sides of the case. And I know that Peter Ku is a council member that have been elected democratically, and I hope that he could consider our position as well. Uh, that, that we know that Peter Ku has done very well in economic development in, within Flushing. That we should consider all sides of economic development, not just one part of Flushing. And, and that we should bring everyone up together in, instead of just one, one part of uh, Flushing society. That flushing development flushing is not just one part of flushing, but every part of flushing should be considered as part of economic development. All right, thank you. I'm going to have to ask uh, you to wrap up. Uh, mm. Uh,好,我,我的,将会就这样子,我希望,我们的一万通子,到发生,亲自看,不影响交通,不影响死人,发生,很,很发达,死人,很,很有前途,我希望,呃,我们有些人通子,都到发生去看,去吃巴比克,
Jessica, can we get a translator? Uh, you may begin. Uh, yeah, with the color, the red is open. Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Mustafa. And the sailor. Uh, that is my uh, business. السن بتاعي ما يسمعش حاولت شغلنا كتير بالراحة. My age is not permitted to look for another job. I try many times to look for another job. ودي الشغلانة اللي أنا ب بسرزة منها. That's the only business that I'm making living, honest living. وأنا عندي أولاد بعلمهم. That's I have a kids and they are in school and they they need they are in college. وعندي مصاريف كتير سكن فبعتمد على هذا الشغل وهذا العمل راح سو داون اوكي سو اي هاف ا هوم اي هاف تو بي رينت اكسبنسز اند اي ديبند اون ذس كايند اوف ليفينج تو سبورت ماي سيلف اند ماي فاميلي ويعني دي شغلتي الوحيده اللي انا بشتغل بيها ذس اونلي ذس اونلي بزنس اي هاف اور ذات اونلي انكم I have so far. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Abdul Alim Abdul Bakr. I'm 26 years old. I do not wonder when I'm 18 years old. I take this business from my fathers. We have people all working in the car next to us. And we'll not make it no traffic for the NYBD. We'll always help him. The farming market was in, uh, is just new there in the places for the 9-11 memorial. Is it, the, the farmer's market is in the side of the memorial. We outside. And there's no prophetic exit and water center. The water center is open for everywhere. So we'll not block traffic. We'll not block the sidewalk. We'll not mix the building. We'll not make it smoking. We'll not use it the, too much gas okay. and all the gasoline. Okay. It's just only sitting hot dog in the drink. The car is too small, so we'll not block nothing. The NYBD always park the car next to us. We watch for him. We help him all the time. If something happens in the area, we keep an eyes everywhere. They ask me, uh, do you see something, something happened here? We told him what we see exactly. I remember one example, uh, the two, uh, two, uh, two women is uh, forget the bag and running away. We told the cops, uh, this is forget the bag and this is the ID for the driver license. We give him the whole thing and he say, thank you. That's not first time it's happened. We've been there for like too many years. And if something happened all the time, we call the police, we told them that's uh, happened exactly. We explained to him what's going on in the area. And we outside, it's that Pacific area exit of the water center. No, the water center is, you can go from anywhere. If you see we are the uh, worst there, so you can check us. Like we don't have gas there, we don't have no nut, we don't have no pump. It's only hot dogs and a drink. We're not making no more smoke. And thank you. Thank you for support us. Thank you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Baki, Abdul Baki. Abdul Baki, Abdul Baki. أنا شغال في الهدوك بقالي مسافة طويلة. I've been working as a vendor long time. 
وعلى حسب ما فهمت من سيادتكم وانتم بتتكلموا از مار از اي اندرستود فروم يور ديسكشنز ان المشكله عامه كلها على امريكا في موضوع الهدوج يعني احنا ما عندناش اي ما فيش اي مشكله خالص انتوا فور ذا سيفتي او فور ذا كونسيرن اباوت ذا فود اتس اول اوفر ذا يونايتد ستيتس وي دونت هاف نو بروبلم التايم سكوير از ويترد سنتر احنا ما بنشتغلش جوه الويترد سنتر احنا شغلنا كله بره الويترد سنتر احنا وي دونت ورك ان ويترد سنتر وي اولويز ورك اوت سايد ذا ويترد سنتر از وي اسكينج واحنا شغلنا كله وبنتعاون مع البوليس وكله بيجي ياكل مننا yes. we are very cooperative with the New York City Department the Police Department and most of the people they like our food and we are very clean عندنا لايسن بندرس في المدرسه قبل ما بنطلع نشتغل بيعرفنا القوانين before we get to the work we get license from the New York City and we learn how to operate our small business ما عندناش اي علاقه مع اي حاجه من المرور وحتى ممكن uh, تنزل الشارع وتشوف ايفن وي دونت هاف اني كايند اوف اوبجيكشن اور اني كايند اوف ابستكلز وذ ذا ترافيك سيجنال اور ترافيك يو نو ان واي بي دي ما عندناش اي مشاكل عامه خالص مع الامن بالذات احنا بنتعاون مع الامن بقدر الامكان وي دونت هاف اني كونسيرن اور وي دونت هاف اني بيرر بروبلمز اور ترابلز وذ ذا ان واي بي دي كونسيرن سيفتي كونسيرن But, but, oh, but we are cooperating with the NYPD. بالعكس احنا حريصين على ان ان نحافظ على اكتر من الامن. We are so more concerned about the safety of the New York City. دي بلدنا وفتح لنا واحنا بناكل وعايشين منها. We consider America is our country and we do appreciate they are welcome us to make a living and honest living and we do are making honest living وبعدين ان الهدوج ده مع من المعالم السياحيه بتاعت امريكا ومن ضمن الاقتصاد بتاع امريكا the vendor of the hot dog is one of the remarkable symbolic of the american society so we have to respect this ما فيش يعني مش شايف ان في اي مشكله عارضه لل I don't see any problems that we are in participate in the world trade center fenders والمفروض ان انتوا تعاونونا على الشيء ده we expect that you are uh, helping us to make our job more better احنا بنربي اولادنا وعندنا اسر وعندنا التزامات من هذا الشيء we make a living we we have a lot of we have a families and we have a children and we depend on this kind of business to support our families okay. thank you thank you so much thank you اسم السيد منصور سيد برسوم بشتغل في المكان ده بقالي 23 سنه كنت i work in this kind of business and in this kind of spot or in this kind in the city for 23 years واحنا دايما بنتعاون مع البوليس على طول. Uh, thank you. We are always cooperating with NYPD safety concern. احنا بعد الأوضة الإزاز هناك تنزل تشوف على الطبيعة عرض الطريق بتاع حوالي 20 متر. هناك في الحتة اللي أنا واقف فيها. Uh, oh, let, me, let me tell you something about the, the spot that I am standing on. This, um, the wide of the spot is 20 yards. أه واحد وقع ذاك النهار على الاسبط سايح جريت انا سو اي جيف يو اكزامبل فوت هاو وي كوبريتنج ذيس سو وان اوف ذا تورست يو نو اي دونت نو فوت اكزاكتلي هي ويل كام هي فول داون سو اي ران اوت فور هيلب كلمت بتاع البوليس اي كول ذا ذا كابس ولقيت قبل كده برضه شنطه محطوطه انا دهت اللي بتاع البوليس جه شاء سو ماني تايمز اي فاوند لوست ستاف And they're turning back to uh, New York YBD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Musa. I've been working near the World Trade Center seven, uh, since seven years. Uh, we don't get any problems with NYBD. We always cooperated with them. They say like we can, anybody can attach like a bomb or something like that near our car. This is not gonna happen because we always take care about the only way we make our living. The problem is they don't want any food vendors near the World Trade Center, and we don't know why. The, the thing is, this is the only way to make our living, to feed our family. If not, we will be starving, all of us. Many of us try to, to help them. We always, like, cooperated with them. And this is the only way. So 
on, on my fish machine. Thank you for your supporting and thanks for listening. Thank you. I'll call the next panel. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Both gentlemen. Both. Angela Ni. Nee. And Mohammed Atia. Sorry, there's, there's no clapping allowed here. It's like we have to go like this, like this. Yeah, there you go. You got it. We have Angela Nee and Mohammed Atia. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, good, good morning, uh, fellow city council members. Um, my name is Angela Nee, and I'm an attorney with the Street Vendor Project at the Urban Justice Center. I am also a resident of Flushing, New York. The Street Vendor Project strongly opposes the proposed ban of street vendors and stoop line stands in downtown Flushing. Street, vends con street vendors contribute to the economy and are an essential part of the fabric of Flushing's culture. As such, they should be celebrated and supported by their local government, not discriminated against and criminalized. As an emerging foodie destination and an area known for famous for its immigrants, Flushing should be fostering immigrant small businesses, not killing them. The proposed bill, which will effectively wipe out the presence of all street vendors in downtown Flushing, does exactly that. If intro 969 passes, not only will it deprive at least 40 vendors of their livelihoods, it will also eradicate the immigrant culture and tradition of inclusion, which Flushing has enjoyed for decades. <clears throat> Um, beyond culture and economy, we believe that this bill is actually misguided and hastily drafted without appropriate data. Uh, Council Member Ku has repeatedly mentioned that the sidewalk widening in Flushing has not eased congestion and referred to the vendors as illegal vendors. Well, we actually went to Flushing on two separate field studies and we have pictures as evidence um, to submit uh, supporting that one, the sidewalks are actually not congested during said rush hours, um, and that uh, the vendors in Flushing, they are all licensed, and they are observing all the applicable New York street vending laws. So we don't understand what Council Member Ku is talking about when he says illegal street vendors. Additionally, we have to mention that we agree with Council Councilwoman Koslowitz in that st uh, the City Council is an improper venue to close streets for vending because the, street, uh, the City Council has already established a street vendor review panel with the express language under New York City Administrative Code 20-465.1. That panel has the power to consider proposals uh, concerning the closure of streets. Because street vending policy is so specialized, we think that that panel should have special jurisdiction over street closures, not the City Council. Lastly, let's talk about the real reason for this bill, gentrification. It is patently not about um, congestion. As a, re as a resident of Flushing for over 13 years, I personally witnessed the development in Flushing. With these developments, it is certainly admirable, but Flushing would have never gotten to the point there where it is now without the street vendors and immigrant small businesses. Street vendors are not a dirty relic of the past, but a sign of a cosmopolitan and multicultural future. We certainly hope that the City Council will keep that in mind and oppose uh, intro 969. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Aspinal and Council members. Uh, my name is Mohamed Atiyah. I am a co-director of the Street Vendor Project. Today is a very sad day for me. I am so disappointed that the City Council is holding a hearing to discuss some anti-vendors bill and instead of helping the vendors, after all the promises over the last three years to work on the vendors issue, especially with the permits. I'm here to oppose intro 959. I like that the NYPD admitted in their testimony that the bill will be disruptive to some vendors. But let me tell you about these vendors. We know all of them. The NYPD said there are about 10 vendors. That is not correct. There are more than 22 vendors who make living in these locations for a number of years. They support their families and feed their kids. Their cars and tables are all there all the time. Some of them have been there for five years, eight years. Some of them have been there for more than 20 years. It's very important to acknowledge that 18 out of these 22 vendors are Muslims. And as a Muslim American, today, I feel so offended by these bills. I feel so offended by intro 959 and by the NYPD testimony. Muslim vendors are not a threat. The NYPD mentioned that these cars can be turned easily into weapons as they use propane and gasoline. How so? How so when these cars are so available to inspection anytime but many government agencies? The NYPD and Department of Health go there all the time to do inspection. 
Maybe they are worried that some terrorists one day would come and act like a vendor and get close to this area. If that is their concern, we respect that, but the NYPD must know that these 22 vendors who work there every day will be the first to know these suspicious people and report them all the time. They will never let such a thing happen. It is not a reasonable update, as some people might think. It is not a reasonable update to the law. It is so unjust. It is so racist. It's a part of the anti-Muslim agenda that the NYPD carries against Muslims in New York. And instead of passing this bill, I invite you and the NYPD to meet these vendors, work with them to make sure this area is more secure than safe. Vendors have served for decades at the eyes and ears of the city streets. Muslim vendors were never a threat and will never be a threat. Please stop intro 959 and work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have 23 more vendors. Uh, we're gonna, hey, no clapping, no clapping. Uh, we have 23 more vendors. Uh, we're gonna put one minute, uh, the, the one minute clock, I'm gonna have to enforce it. Uh, so, uh, El Saeed Mansour, Carla Nicholas, ja Jack Preet Singh, Ahmed Khalil, Mustafa, Mohammed Mohammed. You may begin. I just pushed. Mm -hmm. My name is Carla, and I'm a general vendor. And I'm part of the 22 vendors that will be affected by the city's resuming of vendors. I enlisted in the Army after the 9-11 attacks. I served my country for four years. I fought terrorism in Baghdad, Iraq. Today, I'm standing here defending my spot that I've been selling for five years. This is my livelihood. We are the eyes and the ears of the World Trade Center. Some vendors speak more than two languages. We stand outside in the 100 degree weather and in the 10 degree hot weather, I mean, cold weather. Sometimes there's no pedestrian traffic and we're the only ones there. If there's a threat, we will be out, we're outside. The NYPD is inside their vehicles or inside the buildings during those harsh weathers. Also, what I do see in the area, and I'm sorry for going over, is that there's a lot of buses with idling engines during the hot summers and cold winters. I see delivery packages being left unattended. I see florists leaving their trunks open in vehicles unattended for long periods of time. Also, what about the sellers at the farmer's market? Do they have any background or security clearance? Thank you. Hi, doing, everyone. My name is Mohammed Mohammed. I'm working in a vendor on World Trade Center. I've been there eight years. I'm working by West Side Highway. Actually, what I'm talking about, the police booth, like almost 100 feet from me. We never bother there working there for eight years. We never have no problem with the cops. We never have no problem with the customer. I've been here, wor I've been working eight years. I'm paying my tax. I have two children to support. The problem, my son, he want to be a police officer. You can't imagine by tomorrow morning when the cops want to move me out of there, take my level, you know, take the bread out of my kid's mouth. What are I gonna tell him about he wanna be a cop? This is the problem is, I've been there working eight years, I never have no problem with everyone. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in the United States and we work in New York City. We be tax. Uh, we, 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 we make a living, honest living. We don't make troubles. In the heavy weather, in the rainy weather, in the cold weather, we are staying in the, in the street serving food for the people. When the, all the stores closed, there is no food around, we are open 24 hours to serve people. Right, so that means the passenger or the, the, the people walking down the street, we serve them. Even, even the cops, even the police, man, 
We serve them the food. Isn't something? No problem. We don't. We don't look. For, we don't do troubles, or we look for troubles, or we don't want to disturb the safety or concern. We are Americans. We love America. So please help us. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Ahmed Khalil Mustafa. I have 64 years old. أنا هنا وات من 1981. I think that there has never been a problem between the food vendors and, and the police department. Since I start until now, we, we stay in a street with her food for the public, and we don't have no problem. Uh, I don't see any kind of graphic or any kind of uh, restriction with the traffic. We, we have small cars and we have designated by the city. We don't have this kind of pollution or gas leak or something. That's a long time. Why today you have the issue, read the issue? Why the issue with you that you want to move us out? And you, you, you call, you call and I have to ask for to about the design up. and the safety. Why? why, why I have a we have concern. A, we have a family. We, 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 we have a concern too. We have a family. We, have, we, we, we support them. We have a people uh, in our responsibility. That's why we work hard. We work hard. Uh, police department, he want to move us. For what? What the reason? That's fair. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. All right. What the reason that uh, they want to move us? Thank, Thank you. you. Shukran. Peter Polakos, Abdel. Aim Abdel Baki, Jaweed Ahmad, Ma Mamadan Nig, Niang, Ali, Ali, no. Mr. Niang, Ali, ja Jaweed Ahmad, Abdel. Aim Abdelbaki and P Peter Polakos. Right. All right. I'll let them go. Please, please begin. Begin, sir. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Mamadou, um, uh, African American. I'm the history vendor. I'm in the corner of Berkeley and Broadway since 2004. And these 14 years, I'm in the same place. Thank God, I'm in the safe place. And I make uh, some living. I have my family, I have two children going to school. I see part of my life and my children's life. And the 10 years ago, I thank God I never have the violation, never have the problem with the police department. Everybody know me over there. I know many neighborhood over there. We don't have no problem. 
and we over there to serve the New York community, and we over there to serve the tourist community because, you know, the, we have the different we weather. From uh, no November to February, the water is very complicated. The tourists come from different estates, warm estate. When they come in, they, they need to protect. The New York City people, when the, world, when, when the day is rainy time, everybody needs to protect for the umbrella and everything. We're here to serve the community. We don't have no problem. That's why we ask, we need the help. To say, because when we move in this corner, when we are, where are you going to go? I don't know. If you go somewhere, no, no safety, and you don't make a living, it's going to affect your life and your family life. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. And God bless America. Thank you. Next. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I live in Flushing, and I have been doing a barbecue vendor for two years now. Then our, my vendor is completely legal and have been approved by the city of New York. Uh, uh, that uh, my family completely relies on on this barbecue vendor. Uh, I'm from the province of Xinjiang in China, uh, so I'm not uh, perfectly fluent in Mandarin. Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Torbeck. Peter Cristo Dohas. Song Xiao Peng. Amadan Lar. Amadan? Oh, Amadou, sorry. Amadou Lang. Potomata Kamara. Potomata Kamara. From the Bronx? Okay, you may begin. You may begin. You may begin. I'll make it. Yeah, you go. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Thomas Torbeck, <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm a vendor in Flushing, downtown Flushing. Uh, Mr. Ku knows me because uh, I, I've been right behind his office. And uh, we're there 30 years. The guy supports me. I supported my family on it and everything. And, uh, you know, we're there three decades so, you know, of, uh, of vending. And, uh, you know, they just want to pick us up and throw us out after three decades, you know, supporting my family and still supporting my family. You know, so and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Peter Christodoulias. I'm a vendor over 40 years, New York State, state, and I'm glad to. And uh, I, I raised two kids. My son, he's accounting. My daughter, she's in the school yet. And, st and I'm still working with my brother, 39 in Main Street. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Song Xiaopeng. Um, I have a street vendor in Flushy. Well, I mainly the New York. I mainly the Flushing. But I want to say that we need to survive. That that we need to survive. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to survive by uh, having street vendor. Oh, uh, thank you. But thank you. Thank you. 
good afternoon my name is uh, Ahmed Lam. I mean uh, 27 years and history uh, library any charity 27 years I work over there by the Burger King I have four kids in this country uh, I help the the NYPD too because some people come here you know you speak English I can talk to him in a, uh, French I can talk to him in Spanish I can talk to him in different languages to help them uh, the NYPD you speak only one language the more vendors help the NYPD because if you look like 30 years ago uh, more cream and in New York City uh, too many vendors no more cream because the cream it go down because lara vendors and in the history it's not like before if you look 30 years ago you look at now you look it's different <coughs> thank you so much That's thank you sir uh marta alvarado thank you gentlemen okay marta alvarado ching chi wa peter from flushing dan rosie flushing Nicholas Christoph. You may begin. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, Nihao. Uh, I'm called Zi Huang. I've been working in Farsen, and I've been working for 20 years. Um, my name is Zi Hua. I've also worked as a street vendor in uh, Flushing for over 20 years. Uh, we place our street vendor specifically on a narrow corner of the street, and I, we specifically did not place it on the main street where most of the traffic congestions are. Uh, we have not we we have operate there legally for a long time and the Department of Hygiene and Sanitation and the NYPD have constantly checked on us to make sure that we are legally operating. Uh, there was one time they gave me a ticket for over four hundred dollars. All right, thank you. Thank you. Nihao, I am Peter. I am now in Farrasheng running a car. Oh, uh, my name is Peter. I've operated uh, also <coughs> in Flushing, a street vendor in Flushing. And I'm very surprised uh, when Peter Ku have written a new legislation state, <coughs> stating that we have been uh, we have been taking up public space. Uh, this is a picture that I've taken uh, yesterday at 11.30 a.m. in the morning. There is, as you can see from the photo, that there is absolutely no congestion on the street whatsoever. Yeah. And then, we are uh, to to state it clearly that we are obviously minority and we are an underclass within the New York City. Uh, we, we are already making uh, very little and that we are supposed to be receiving help from the government, but instead they have tried to create new legislation in making our lives even more difficult as it already is. And another gentleman, 
，让我们过着幸福。眼前我们看到的什么情况呢？你再从我们赶走，从街道上赶走，把我们工作机会夺走。When Council Member、um, Peter Ku was was trying to get his re-election, our street vendors have also supported him. What did he tell us? He tell us that we will have more job opportunities, that we could be more prosperous under his guidance within the city council. But instead, that he's trying to get rid of us from the streets. Thank you. I have, I have to cut. I have to cut. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Is it on? Yeah, it's yeah. on. My name is uh, Nicholas Christos. I've been working in the uh, Flushing area as a street vendor for uh, 28 years. Uh, this year is my anniversary, the 20th year of the anniversary since 1990. Um, that's what I, and prior to that, my dad was there for 15 years. My late uh, dad. So. I'm very emotional because yesterday afternoon I found out that uh, Mr. Ku proposing a, I, I received a letter that he's proposing to get me out of there. Well, where am I gonna go? That's all I know, that's my business. I'm not a storefront, but I'm there for a reason. I've been serving the public for 30, almost 30 years. This is not a joke, uh, and I would love to, you know, to, for Mr. Peter Kut to understand I'm in a nice, in, a, in an area where I don't bother no one. There's no one around me. There's no buildings. There's no, I'm next to a, a landmark, which is St. George Church. I'm uh, in an open, uh, a 12 feet. I have to ask you to, uh, to, um, to finish, to wrap up your testimony. Right. The, the, the street is wide enough for me to vet there. I've been there legally for um, so many years. And um, that's what I like to, to say, that uh, this bill has not, you know, not vote no for this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Martha Alvarado, and I'm a street vendor in Flushing. I've been working for about 20 years for somebody else. I just got, I'm sorry, my own permit, finally after waiting so long. And I've been serving Flushing area for more than 20 years, and I'm so happy in my job. Now I see grown up kids that I know him, not them, very little. I said, oh, I'm so happy to you still here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's what we're here for. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Dan Rossi. Um, I'm not affected by these bills. Where I've been is far away, but what I want to do is explain exactly what's happening here. These men and women are fighting for their livelihoods, but it's not only them that's going to be affected by the bill. If you were to close these streets, they're going to try and find a place somewhere else, and they're going to affect other blocks. So the livelihoods of other vendors on other blocks are going to be affected. It just doesn't stop and I'm gonna close this street and that's the end of it, they're gonna go and move away. They're gonna still have to try and find a, make a living. And the problem just keeps piggybacking. It just keeps getting worse and worse. There's a solution to the problem. And that's what you have to come with, if, if there's a problem. First we have to find out if there's a legitimate problem with congestion, and if there is, then we'll resolve it. But that's the first thing you have to do before you go ahead and take away the livelihoods of anybody in this room. I know the solution. It was presented here by Karen Koslowitz. The street vendor review panel was the reason these people have, con you have congestion in your area. That was the reason. Hundreds of streets were closed to vending for absolutely no reason. But the street vendor review panel is the solution to your problem. If you would add the Department of Transportation's formula for congestion to that bill and then review the streets, you would open up hundreds of streets in midtown Manhattan. These neighborhoods that are congested with carts, they wouldn't be congested anymore because they would flock to midtown. That's your solution. All the council members that are in the outer boroughs, if they were to look at this, they would vote on this in 10 seconds. 
What happened to the, to the city 25 years ago under Rudy Giuliani is the, is the problem you're having now. That's your solution. Don't take away their livelihoods until you look into this. Thank you, sir. That's all I can say. Thank you. Uh, Samed uh, Amer. Peter Wang. And Ham Hamdi Hashem. And there's a Jeremy Moss. Jeremy Moss. You may begin. You may begin. Good afternoon. My name is Amir. I work for <coughs> this is bought around our retreat center for more than years. And that's the only job we have to do. So we don't have second chance to learn any more job. So all the time we cooperate with the police and there was the we have we know the law between the like the sidewalks and the entrance and the, all the time we guide the tourists and sometimes we cooperate with the police for anything. And even the police know our faces, you know. Even if one, uh, one of us take one day off, they ask, they ask about us. So that's only here to know. That's the only thing we do. That's all. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Good morning. اسمي حمدي هاشم. My name is Hamdi Hashim. أنا شغال في الأريا اللي هي حوالين الدول ترس سنتر. I'm working. I'm working in this area. That's my spot for three years around the World Trade Center. أنا عن نفسي مش عارف أقول إيه. I I I don't know what to say. Why does he? بس يعني أنا أسأل إن يعني لما تيجي الأريا يبقى تخش ستريكتك اريا او زي ما هم بيقولوا ان المكان يبقى ممنوع على اعتقاد ان لازم يكون في بديل للكلام ده اوكي اف يو هاف اوكي يو وانا اكسكلود اس فروم ذس اريا دي سيد ذات از ريستريكتد اريا اند دي سيد ذات از ا لوت اوف كونسيدريشن اباوت لايك سيفتي او سو ات از ات هاز تو بي ريبليسمنت بلان تو بوت اس ان انذر اريا He's just you know, kicking us like this. Uh, this place has almost, uh, or have almost 22 cars, vendor cars. Every car or every vendor car, uh, cart has family behind this car. A lot of responsibility. ف يعني على اعتقادي ان المسؤول او اللي مقدم طلب بقفل المكان او بقفل الاريا يكون فكر في الناس ديت حتى I, I the the person who responds or this bill or he issued this kind of law he has to think about behind the cart a lot of families and a lot of responsibility وبعدين يعني انا شايف ان هم باصين للفوت فندر ديت ان هي حاجه كبيره حاجه وحشه جدا يعني اي ثينك ذات واي يو لوك داون اون ذا فوت فندر بزنس وي ورك هارد وي تراي تو ميك ا ليفينج وي بي تاكس افتر اسك تو راب ات اب النظره اللي بتبصوها اللي هم بيبصوها للفوت فندر يعني على ما اعتقد ان هم بيبصوا بيبصوا لها من فوق قوي ان هم فوت فندر ولا حاجه في في الستريت بس للاسف دول بيقدموا شغل زيهم زي اي حد اي ثينك ذات ذا لوك ذا واي يو لوك انتو ذا فوت فندر از ا هيومن بينج از ا ليل بيت كايند اوف يو نو اوتسايد ذا بيكتشرز از وي ار نوت يو نو يو نو 
try to, you know, manmanizing us as a human being. No, we are very important in the street, and we serve a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I hope that I hope that I hope that you can withdraw this kind of plan uh, for many consideration on a humanitarian basis. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. We're done. Um, thank you, Chair Espinal, for holding this hearing. And I just want to thank everyone for coming and telling your stories. And that's what this process is about. And we're going to try to work with NYPD and work with the vendors and to make sure that, that we find a solution and that we have the least impact as possible. Thank you. Thank you. With that said, this meeting is adjourned. I'm voting today, are you? No, we're not voting today. This is just a public hearing for right. amendments. Again, this is not a vote. This is a public hearing. After this hearing, there will be more deliberations, uh, and then uh, if anything comes out of that, then there will be a vote. Thank prepared. you.